Okay, uh, good morning, members. I hope you'll be able to hear me. <clears throat> it's quite rainy here, but uh, we pray that uh, all goes well. Uh, sorry, we started late. Uh, I think we can straight away uh, get started uh, immediately. And um, I request someone to give us a word of prayer as we get to, as the others join me. Sorry. Want to give us a word of prayer? Um, uh, Emma Roth, could you give us a word of prayer? Is it get started? Emma you're on. Okay. Let's humble ourselves and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for this opportunity that we are going to have this lesson. We ask for your help. We also ask for your assistance. You help us to understand this lesson and help us to pass our final examination. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Emirate, for the prayer. And uh, as the others join in, uh, we, we look, we've been looking at the uh, We've been looking at uh, the Bononia theorem, and I think we came to a close in our previous lesson. And um, I give you those questions. I hope you've tried them out in your, either with your friends or alone. And I told you, in case you get any challenge, you will always uh, let us know at uh, a moment. Yes, Larry, you have a question about the work? Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. I have a question hmm. about number two on the questions you gave us. It was, you said obtained, yes. by, obtained a binomial hmm. expansion. Hmm. No, it was one part B. Hmm. It says use the expansion Use this binomial expansion to evaluate 1.3 over 0 0.7 power mm -hmm. half to four decimal places, hence evaluate root of 90, 91. Mm -hmm. Now my question is, uh, mm -hmm. before, before this part of read, there was a certain question you said to expand one plus three X mm -hmm. over one minus, 3x, mm. they are all powered to a half. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, after, after finishing to expand this, my question yes. was, how do mm. I use the expansion of this to evaluate this, the one of figures here? This one here? Yes. Now, what, actually, what you're supposed to, after doing the expansion, you yes. replace x here, okay? You replace yes. x. So therefore it will be like, if, for example, you have 1.3 out of 0 0.7. It means yes. that when you put in a root, one plus three into 1.3 out of one minus uh, three into 1.3. This is, sorry, 0 0.5, 0 .3, 0 0.7. 0 .3. This is yes. what it means. So in the other expanded value, you replace wherever where you will find the x part of it. So uh, yes. where we find the x, we, we do that replacement. We okay, replace these you. figures here. That's what we do. Yes, please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, unless there is any other issue. So uh, the key issue was us carrying on the expansion part of it. So when you do, you carry on that, it makes everything quite easier. 
All right. Okay. Um, I, I know, I don't know, maybe for starters, I thought you would start with this, but because of time, I think we may not be able to, to do so. But I'd extracted it from uh, I'd extracted it from the work exercise that we did. Uh, but because of time, I may not be able to run through it as well. Okay. Now, uh, uh, besides the, the that binomial theorem, please, when you finish all those numbers, try them out. Trust me. I think the whole thing will be that. And when you check the past papers, you realize that the questions are all in the same form. Just that uh, there are some that bring in the APs. Yeah, the arithmetic progression, some few, uh, some few questions will bring in the arithmetic progression. But then when you realize that when we carry on those expansions there, most of them are in AP form. Okay, the rest of them are in AP form. So this right shouldn't really confuse you when you're working through. Now, uh, today uh, I want us to handle differentiation. And it's what we are going to keep on uh, working through. Uh, we are going to keep working through. And um, I hope we learn a couple of things uh, as far as the as far as this depreciation is concerned. So uh, we are going to start right from now. I keep on encouraging you members that um, as we are learning through, let's take note that let's not miss out any lesson eh? because it helps us to connect to our coming lesson. What we are looking at today will help us to cover what we have tomorrow. Sorry, in the next lesson. So literally, I think we need to have that consistency as we keep working through that's what i want us to to keep work to keep in mind as we work out now uh today we are going to look at two things uh good reading if we get uh, if our time allows we're going to look at the gradient of a, of a curve and also differentiation from first principles those are the two things I want us to work with, have in mind. Now, um, when we talk about a uh, gradient of a curve, th these are the two things that we are going to focus on. Finding the gradient of a curve at any point and also differentiating right from first eh, principles. Now, when we talk about differentiation, we are going to understand the point that when we are differentiating, uh, as long as we get this, it all starts with gradient of a curve, okay? That's where it all starts from, the gradient. It's the one that leads us into the other concepts of differentiation. Now, um, <clears throat> to start with, I know at some level, I think either in all level, we looked at the, uh, the gradient of a line, okay? Gradient of a line, of a straight line. And in most cases, we... Um, Okay, and in most cases, we looked at most of that given line. This is a line. Maybe let me draw it here and you can easily get it. I hope I get my calculator here. Now, when you have the line, when we have our line, uh, the, the gradient of our line, it's quite easy for us to come up with. When we, when we have a line drawn, it is easier for us to come up with our gradient so uh, those of you when you get a when you get a pay when you get when you get your uh, now here right now we don't do the accurate kind of drawing yeah? we just use the the approximation uh let me draw something here this is y equal to 2x uh plus one okay now this is our line i hope we can see it, this one here this is the, the line that we shall come up with, okay? When, if we are supposed to come up, if you to draw that in, if you are supposed to draw that line, it's the line of, now when you have this line in all of we say you can easily come up with the gradient of this. Now we know all of us, we know that the gradient is the change in Y out of the change in what? out of the change in X, 
this is a, this is a, what we had in the in our O level. So meaning that when you have, if you want to, if you want the gradient of this line, you pick up a point. Okay, maybe we can take any point of that line. That the, the point, this will be the change in X and also this will be the change in what? The change in Y. Now, when you get that gradient, you realize that it will be the same throughout. Even if you draw one here and even if you draw another here, you realize that what you get here, there's the gradient, the change in X, of, the change in Y out of the change of X will be the same throughout that entire line. That's what we had in our level. Right? And, and that's the, the knowledge that we are going to keep building on from. Okay, so in in our working, when we start from this point here, this is what we looked at in our olive. That when you have this line here, and you're supposed to get the gradient, okay, this will be this will give us the gradient. It will be the change in y out of the change in x, and you'll be able to get your your gradient. Okay, now when we move on to a curve, this is a straight line. So, but what happens when we are having a curve? What happens when we are having a curve? Now, uh, the curve here, let me, we are trying to look at this, uh, we are trying to look at this kind of curve. I, I hope we can be able, uh, we are looking at if we have this one here, this is a curve of y equals x squared. So when we have this, you realize that getting the, the gradient won't be the same, okay? You will not easily get the same way of getting the gradient as for the line. So how will the one for the, this graph, this, how will this graph look like? Now for this graph, uh, we shall also uh, come up with the same thing. We shall also draw the same thing. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me change this. Okay, so we shall also come up with the same thing. Now, what are we trying to develop? We are trying to develop the point of the gradient of a curve. That is what we are trying to look at. And remember, we've started from the line, knowing that the gradient of the line is the same, whatever point. You just pick on any point and then you draw your, then you come up with your, with your, with your gradient. Okay, that's what you do. So what happens when you have the curve? That's the other the challenge that we are having. Uh, okay, this is, 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 is just to show something here. Oh, the network switched off. Huh? So, okay, we will get it. Okay, oh, yeah, I know, I understand the network issue. Eh? But if those of us who are having network issues at some point, don't worry. We always upload this in our uh, at our um, YouTube channel, so you can easily still uh, get through uh, the work. So now we are saying that if we have the curve, the, the curve which is y equals to uh, x squared, let me write it here. Y equals to x squared. Okay. And this is our curve that we are having. I'm trying to, to draw the curve so that we can be able to see it. So if we have this as our curve and you are told to pick up the gradient, okay. And we are told to pick up the gradient of this curve here. Now you may not easily get this here. You may end up getting every part will be having its own graph, every part of the curve. Maybe you may be, when you calculate through, you'll end up getting a different values, okay? Uh, what are we doing? We are getting the gradient of the curve and we are under differentiation. I don't know, but Hillary has been on from the beginning. Well, what happened? You were a little bit on and off. Yeah? Hillary, I hope you're, you're fine because I... Okay, so um, okay, so let, let's pay close attention. How to get the notes and everything? We shall get all that. Eh? I want us to pay close attention. I have the notes that are there, but I don't want to 
move on, but I want us to show these illustrations so that we can be able to see. I know our network is, or is not so much stable, but I think we shall be able to work through. Okay, so if we do have this and we are told to find a gradient, what are we supposed to do? So for this, for this, what we do, we always draw what you call a tangent over a given point, and then you get that gradient here. So here you can draw a tangent, and then possibly you get the gradient at this point here. Then here you also can draw a tangent and also get the gradient there. So you realize that when you keep drawing those tangents there, the, the, you will draw those tangents here over this given line until we, we are able to. So when you draw the, the tangents and then you'll come up the, with those triangles and they will be able to help us to find the, the gradient of that given time. So at the end of it all, you realize that what you're going to get will be different. The changes in Y over the changes in X. Okay, here you get the change in Y over the change in X. Change in Y over the change in X like that all these ones here. So in so doing, you'll be able to come up with your given points here. You'll be able to come up with it, the different gradients. So now this is how complex it is. So change in X over change in Y. Change in X over the change in, over the change in Y, okay? So do all equations with a square of X, have a curve I, I think yes you you can try to try try it out you can try it out that's all a curve no matter what form it is okay so dear members what we are saying here is this is how you'll be able to come up with your gradients as far as this curve is concerned we pick on a point we pick on a change in x a given point in change in x for example here we can say we are picking maybe from point one Okay, this is from maybe point one, point two up to this point here. These are the changes that we are doing. So when you put this change here, then you get the corresponding change in Y and then you are able to come up with your, with your gradient. Okay, so this one is for this curve Y equals to X squared. Okay, so we draw tangents at given points. So you say you can draw tangents at X equals to you can say negative three, okay? At negative two, at zero, at one, two and three. And so you realize that the maximum here is three. I don't know if we are seeing here. We can't go beyond this for this curve here. Look at our last here is negative three and also this one is three. So meaning here we can go on and on up to three, okay? So you just draw, you just draw tangents at those points there. So if it is at negative three, we get here and then we draw. That is the that is that is the change. This is the change here. So then you draw a line from there and then you get this change there. So if we are to get at negative two, we shall come to here at this point here. Okay. So we shall have our change from here and then you draw. So we shall have our change at negative two and so on and so forth. So at the end of it all, we shall be able to use this to come up with it, our different gradients. So when you do that, what will our gradient be like? Okay, what will our gradient be like when we, when, when we keep on uh, doing that? This is what we shall come up with. So uh, this is our curve. This is the curve that we have said. Uh, this is the the curve that you've drawn. So all these notes I'm going to push, I'm going to send them to you. So you may not bother yourself to. We can just take note of the key things here, but you get all the things uh, in the Google Classroom. Eh? So don't worry. So this is our curve. And we are saying that for you, for you to come up with the gradient here, you draw tangents at given points of X, okay? So at, uh, we said you can say at X equals negative three, X equals to two, X equals to one, one, two, three. Okay. This is where we are ending. We are ending until because this is our these are our last points. Eh? You can't go to four because literally that is uh, what our curve is showing us. Okay. 
So this is what we will be able to do. So as you can be able to get the tangent. Now, when you get these tangents here, there is something we are going to realize. Okay, there's something you're going to realize. So uh, this is what we shall be able to get. If, I, if we are to get the, the that gradient, uh, these changes there, change in y, change in x, like that. This is what you're going to get. Now, I, I want you to maybe when you when you look critically and get these the, these values here, when you try to calculate, we are saying you're going to get different. We are going to get different values. Okay, we are going to come up with different values. So in so doing, we are going to come up with a table in this form here. Okay, we are going to come up with a table in this form here. So to, for us to come up with a gradient of that given curve x squared, we get our value, our changes of x here, which is negative three, negative two, which I've mentioned to you, the tangents that we have drawn eh, at those points. Then you replace them in this eh, equation here. Okay? So when you get your change, for, uh, for example, let's try to check, when you get the change in y over the change in x, okay? So where we shall be able to get the change in y, where we shall get this will be negative. Okay, you get the change in y over the change in x. And then we do these replacements here. At the end of it, all our values are going to, we are going to have this. Okay, this will be our different gradients that we are going to get. Okay, this will be our different gradients that we shall get. So it's like uh, you have uh, negative three, uh, negative three squared, c squared, plus or minus uh, negative two uh, squared over negative three minus uh, negative uh, minus negative two. Okay. So here we shall get the nine minus the four. Is it? Oops, so. Uh, where we get? I think this is, okay. This will be the nine. I think this is a, the plus or something. Okay, sorry. Uh, we have uh, something like this. Let's stop here. But uh, literally, when you draw those, uh, okay. When we draw those tangents through, this is what we shall get as our gradient. Now, from this gradient that we do have, there is something that we need to build. Okay, there is something we need to build. You realize that every time you are having, if your x is a negative three, your y is a negative six. Okay. If your X is negative three, your Y is negative six. What does that show? Now we are saying that it means that the Y, okay, will be two times the X. For example, when you get two times this negative three, you're going to get negative six. When you get your, this, if this is your X, so if you get your two times negative two, you'll get your negative four. So we shall come up with this one here. So at the end of it all, we are, we are saying here that our gradient for those different curves, those different points on the curve are 2x. The 2x is coming in in such a way that when you get the two times the x here, you'll be able to come up with your gradient. So in a, in a, simpler, in a simpler form, for you to get the gradient of the points or different points on the curve, it is two times the other X, which will be able to give, give you the gradient of that given point on the curve. So at the end of it all, you see that you are getting these different points, but what's the main point that we are trying to drive at here is that for you to get the gradient, if you're to get the gradient, okay, of Y equals X squared, for the gradient here, the gradient will be to x. So no matter what you do, you only need to get the value of x. If x is equal to one, two x, meaning the gradient will be two. If your x is equal to two, then the gradient will be equal to four and so on and so forth. 
that's the formula that we shall use for us to get the what? Our gradient there. Now, uh, what are we trying to put up? But what we are showing is that these, these points here that we do have on our, on our curve, they do not have the same, same gradient. Okay, they don't have the same gradient. If you have this uh, curve in this given form, they are not the same. So how do we get? We get points, we get points at X, at X. But uh, all these gradients here that you get, they, are, they will be in a form of two X. Meaning if you're to, uh, the, the meaning, whatever you're going to get, Okay, let's take an example. If you have this point here, if we have this point here, if we take this point, for example, this is point, this is 13, and also this is six, okay? And this is your change in Y, okay? This is your point Y, and this is your change in Y. Maybe you can say Y plus eh? change in Y. So this is 13, okay? Then when you get this one here, if we get this point here for X, so let's take our X as a, maybe 2.5. This is 2.5. This is your point X, 2.5. And your X plus one, X plus the change, maybe this is 3.5. This is your change in X. Uh, maybe this is X, this is X plus a change in X. These are the points that you have. Can someone try to use these points to get for us the gradient of the curve at this point here? If you have this, your y is, is six, your change in y is a three, sorry, it's 13. And then your x is 2.5 and your change in x is 3.5. Can you get for me the gradient of this point here? Okay, uh, get me the gradient. Uh, yes, someone to get us the gradient. By show of hands, by show of hands. Uh, yes, Josh. Joshua? Yes, hear me. Yes. Uh, I will get uh, it is the gradient will be the y of uh, the gradient is the y over the x, whereby mm. I will get negative, where I will get 13 minus 6 divided by 3.5 minus 2.5, and the answer will be 7 over 1. Seven over one, which is seven, eh? Which is seven. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, another person to get us the gradient at this point here, let's get this one here. We have this one as two and this is six. This is two and this is six. And then at the point here, down here, we have 1.5 and 2.5. 1.5, then 2.5, then 6 and 2. Uh huh. Um, yes, Melissa. So, change in y out of change in x, and change in y is 6 minus 2, which is 4, out of what is 1.5? Yes, 1.5 and 2.5. Out of 2.5 minus 1.5, which is 1. So it will be equals to 4. This will be 4. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, you, you see that you, we, are, we are trying to build up different, different uh, gradients at the end of it. So we have different gradients at uh, this point here. Okay. So um, okay, so that's what we do have. Okay, um, I think we have seen that as well. Huh? Now, uh, at the end of it all, this is what we are going to. Okay build on we are going to build on from that given point so uh now another thing that's how we will find the other thing now the second method that we do have as far as the gradient is concerned is when we use the quad 
the code is like half, the other half, eh? the other half of, remember the graph is complete eh? like that, but we pick on the other half. Now, this other half is going to give us something that is going to help us come up with the uh, theory here. Now, when you have, when you draw now, we have this point here. Remember, this is the half, the half of that curve. We call it the code, eh? the other half. So if we still build on, if we still do the same thing, if we still do the same thing here. Hey, by the way, remember the, uh, something that you need to know here. Remember our y is the x squared. Hey, there is something, remember the way, those who are calculating. Your y is x squared here. Uh, where is it? I think here. There is something we're at. Your y is x squared. Eh? When you're putting in your changes here, your change in y, your y is x squared. Eh? So meaning when you put, when you're getting your value of X, your X is, is a square because Y is equal to X squared. Don't take, take note of that. Eh? Remember y, y is X squared. So when you're doing, you're, we are going to square the top, then the other bottom one, we leave it that way. So um, we are here now. So we are saying that uh, when you draw that quad and we draw a tangent, at two given points as well. So we are going to get a change. If we get these different uh, changes here, of course, we're also not going to get the same thing, okay? So we're also going to get the different changes at these different points here. Pick on any point that you want, and then you get those changes. So in this one, what we do, if you pick on any points, okay? Maybe we have a point X, X at two, up to x2, three, these are the changes, meaning we are changing from two up to three. So when you get, uh, this is what I was trying to bring in, the change in y is the squared. Eh? Why are we bringing the squared? Because your y is equal to x squared. Eh? That's, this is your y, okay? That's what I wanted to bring in eh? when you're calculating the other gradients. Eh? So your change in y will be, so the x squared will be the three squared, where we've changed to minus the two squared, where we where we were original, original. So out of three minus the two, this is the X now, the X remains, eh? the X and then the change in X. Okay, these ones remains, but this one, because we have our Y is equal to X squared. So when you're substituting, make sure the X squared is there. Uh, that's what uh, I wanted to put in place as you're working through, okay? So when you get two points on the quad, uh, maybe let me let me try to work it out here. When you get two points on a chord, say if your point is a, if you're moving from point x equals to two and x equals to three, so what to and your your y is x squared. So your gradient, your gradient will be the change in y out of the change in x. Please, this is not b. This is change. Or some, we can also write small change in y over the smaller change in x. This is small change. This is a, a general change, okay? So a change in y, these changes here are y plus the change in y, okay? This is what we have, minus the y over the x plus the change in x, minus the x. I want us to do the right substitution here, okay? So what does this mean? Your change in y, remember we said our y is what? Is x squared, okay? Our y is x squared. So in so doing, and we have the changes here. So meaning our change when we do substitute, that's why we are going to have, the change is one field, which is three squared. This is where we've reached minus the two squared. The two squared, remember the square, please I want to emphasize that the square is coming from this. This is where it is coming from. Okay. I, I repeat, let me repeat this huh? because we may, we may lose the concept. We are on the gradient of the code now. If you pick any point, any change in X, any point, remember what is changing the X, eh? Not the y. What is changing is the x. When you have your code, this is our code that we have. What we are changing is this one here. 
is our x. Okay. So if you change your x from two and you move to three, meaning we've changed it from two up to three. Our original, our original point is this, and this is our change in what? In x. That's what we have. But you know that your y is equal to what? To x squared. That's what you do. That's what you have. That's what we need to know in the beginning. So what you're now going to have is what you're now going to have is the change in y, which is y plus the change in this minus that. So this change in y, when you do the substitution here, will be equal to the x squared. Okay? Don't go and draw the other one from there. We are picking up from here. Our change is now what? x, which is 2, and also the other one is 3, where we've changed 2. So this will be 3 squared out of, so this is x, not y. So the change in x, we've changed to three and our original point was, was two, okay? Our original point was two. So when you do so, at the end of it all, uh, we, we shall, that's when we come up with our answer as what? As five, okay? this is what we have. Now, what if, what if, you keep on working right here. What if we keep on changing the value of X? Okay. Remember this is a, we've changed from this to this. What if we now change, we, we start, we, we try to adjust X. Maybe it has changed from, maybe we change from, uh, let's try to change our X. If you are maybe now changing from two up to 2.5. Okay, can you get me the gradient of this now? Someone get me the gradient. If you have changed our X from two to 2.5, someone get me the gradient. Uh-huh, uh, yes, Melissa. I hear you. Uh-huh. So I think it would be, wait, the three remains. No, no, our, the, our X is changing from two to 2.5, uh -huh. So three squared minus 2.5 squared. Uh, 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 uh. Remember it is now this, it's not three now. This is what oh. we have. 2.5 squared. Uh -huh. 2.5 squared. Minus two squared. Minus two squared. Out of uh -huh. 2.5 2.5 minus 2 minus 2. So this will give us you see what will this give us? Uh, someone has already given us 2.25 4.5. 4. Someone has given us 4.5 already. You can also prove it out. Eh? <laughs> Prove it out if it's 4.5. Okay. You realize we are getting 4.5. Eh? 4. 5. Yes. 4.5. Good. So, uh huh. Now, there is something I want us to, we are going to drive to. So, you see that in the first one, we got 5. In the second one, we are getting 4.5. So, we are reducing. Remember, this, is, this three is the maximum value of x. Okay. So, we can't go beyond three. Okay, but when you keep reducing down, when you keep tending towards the, when you keep on tending down, take an example, let's also keep on changing. If we are, if our X is, uh, let's try to adjust our X. If we have uh, maybe two, let's maintain, we are moving from maybe two up to maybe 2.1 from two up to 2.1. Uh -huh. What shall we get? Uh, Rita's hand was up. Okay, yes, Emma Ruth. Uh -huh. So we'll have 2.1 two we'll two squared. 2.1 two squared. Minus two squared. Minus the two squared. Out of 2.1. 2.1. Two point one. Minus two. 
minus two. So what shall we get here? Let me work it out. Uh, ah, let me get the questions here. Uh -huh. People have 4.1. Eh? We already have 4.1 there from our from, from people who have worked out. 4.1. Now there is something that we 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 4.1. I hope it's what you've got also, Emirate. 4.1. Now, members, there is something that we are looking, we, we are trying to observe. Look at, we are not interested so much in the in the work, but look at this. Look at our value, our changes in X. Look at our change in X, okay? The first change in X, look at the first one. The first one, first change in X was one, okay? The second change in X was zero point was zero point five. Okay, meaning the X is reducing down. Okay, is it zero point? This is zero happening to our gradient. The gradient is moving. It is moving towards what? Towards the four. You remember it started from five to five point to four point five. Now we're at 4.1. So when you keep reducing this X, this change in X, this is the conclusion we are trying to, this is the conclusion we are trying to draw. That when the value, the changes in X keep reducing, keep tending towards the zero, then our gradient is also tending towards the what? It is tending towards the four. Okay? It is tending towards the what? Towards the four. That's what we are trying to observe. That's our observation that we're trying to look at. Okay, that as the, the as this x tends towards zero, okay, as the change in x tends towards zero, our gradient tends towards what? Towards the four. Okay, it tends towards the the four. So in so doing, that is why we are coming up with this conclusion. That the more you keep reducing our the x, the more you, this x tends towards this one, the more you see that you the more this y here, it will be tending towards the what? It is tending towards the four. Our gradient is tending towards the what? Towards the four. So as you reduce the x, as the, the, the small changes in x reduce, tend towards the zero, then our gradient will also then you can also keep on reducing more and more, more and more. You realize that, okay? So this is what we have. So you're saying, once your change in X, it was one, the gradient was what? The gradient was five. When your change was 0 0.5, the, the change in X was 0 0.5, your gradient was 4.5. When you reduced it further to 0 0.1, it was 0 0.1. 0 0.1. And when you reduce it further to 0 point something, it will also tend towards the what? The four. So it's the small, meaning the small change in X as it tends towards the zero, that means it is always treated as negligible at some point. So it keeps on tending towards zero as we keep moving towards the what? Towards the, 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 the figure that we have, okay? So your result should get closer and closer to four. That's what we we've tried to observe through. So when you use the code, when you have your code, okay? When you have your code and you try to keep on drawing those different tangents, you keep drawing those and your X, as the X keeps on moving downwards to zero, you realize that your, uh, your, your gradient will also tend to a uh, value of four. So this is where, we bring in this option of limits here. So we are saying for this graph, the points on well, these points here, by calculating the gradient of the chord, we are using the small changes in using these changes in X. We notice that the change in X tends to zero, the gradient, Okay, the gradient of the code converges towards a limiting value. And here the limiting value was what? Was four, okay? So 
it's almost suggesting that what? That he, we are almost suggesting that the gradient of the function of the curve y is basically 2x. Okay, remember our x was a, our x is two. Okay, x is it's it's a it is the change which is changing. Yeah? Our x is the same two. If our x is two, so you adjust the changes. Yeah? You only change the change in x. If the change in x is a three, the change in x can be can, can be maybe two point five. So you keep on changing. So literally at the end of it all you realize that you will be tending towards this same thing, which is x squared. Now, the, the point we should leave this point knowing is as you are working out these changes here for the chord, as the changes tend towards the zero, then our gradient will also tend to that fixed value or the limiting value that we need in our our work to cover. Now, um, finally, uh, finally, this is what I possibly want us to close up with. Joshua, your, your hand is up. I hope you have a question or you forgot your hand up. Now, teacher, uh -huh. uh, suppose uh, the other curve, the whole curve was y equaling to x squared. Yes, yes, How? the original one. Yes, the original one. Yes. To get the code, should I represent it as a half, as a half, as the half of the other curve? You know that. Yes, it's it's the half of the other curve. Yes, it's half of the other curve. And I solve that. Yes, it is just a half of that, and then we solve that given half. Okay. All right. We, we've just picked on certain values of. We've just picked on certain values of that curve of y equals to x squared. Do we substitute x in y equals to, or we find the gradient using the formula of the grad? We substitute x equals to y square. Uh, sorry, y equals to x squared. We do that substitution. That's what we, we keep doing. Okay, that's what we keep doing that substitution. I think that's what I wanted to emphasize eh, on. Now, uh, as I said, finally, fi the final thing is differentiating from five first principles. Now. We are picking on the other knowledge that we've just looked at for the gradient of the curve. Now, let me have this point. If we have these points here, uh, let me directly come to the graph. If we have this uh, graph, we have points P, I want to explain this, and we have points Q, okay? Now, here points P, the point of Y, the point Y, this is our original point of Y, and then, here at Q, we have the change in what? In Y. Please take note, we, this is change in Y, that's sigma Y, okay? Change in Y. Now, at P, we have the, the original point of X, and at Q, we have the change in what? Our change in X. Okay, this is what we have. I'm trying to, so meaning here we have our sigma X, or the change in X which we have from here to here is our change in X, while from here up to here is our change in, change in Y. Now, if we are told to find the gradient of PQ, if we are told to find the gradient of PQ, okay, we know that gradient, uh, if we find our gradient PQ, uh, we're here, let me, from here, if you find the gradient of PQ, we shall have the change in y over the change in what? The small change in x, which we have here. So when you do the substitution here, now at some point we can you can write it in that form, or as I said, you can use the sigma notation, okay, over the small change in x. Or this is where we also bring in the d, okay, dy dx. Please, these things mean the same thing. Now, this is where we now define d, dy dx. It means small change in y and small change in what? Small change in x. This is what we want us to, to know. That when you when we try to when we what, what, what this is what I wanted to derive, that when we talk about the dy dx, it means that we are looking at small changes. Okay, small changes 
That's what we are looking at. Small changes in Y with respect to X. Small changes in Y with respect to X. We can also say small changes of X with respect to Y. That's what we, we do have. That's what we, we, we basically look at. So here we shall have I had a small change in Y. What's our small change in Y? Our small change in Y is this one here. Okay, is this Y plus sigma. So we write it there. So we shall have Y plus small change in Y. This is our the, uh, minus the Y. Out of the small change in X will be X plus small change in X minus the x okay this is what we have this is what we've derived from our <clears throat> from our graph that we will come up here with but remember they have said that our y is equal to f of x our y is equal to f of x that's our function so what do we do we do the substitution eh? so meaning wherever we shall see the y we shall substitute it with f of y f of x. So when you do the substitution here, when we do the substitution here, we shall be able to get, uh, this will be equal to f into x plus the smaller change, okay? Plus the smaller change in x minus, this is it, f of x, because this is y. Remember our y is equal to f of x, okay? So out of, then here, here we shall remain. When you open up these brackets here, when you open these brackets, x plus small change in x minus x, okay? So you realize that this x will cross out with this one here. It will be x minus x. So you remain with it, small change in what? Small change in x. I, I don't know if someone has a question at this point here. Before I proceed, uh, this point is, this step is so, so important. Eh? Oh, unless I've left someone behind, please raise up your hand and then I repeat. Okay, it's all good. So this is where we started from. If we are to get this, we are saying small change, which is a small change in Y minus this, but why are, where, are we, where are we replacing the Y? Most cases, the Y is always got from our equation, from the equation that we do have, from the function. So you do that here substitution okay so um why are we putting the f we are putting f this is what we have the function remember our 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 graphs are in forms of in form of functions here okay this is what we've been given the function x our y is a f of x that's what we we have in our in our question all right so in so doing, when you do the, 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 the substitution, this is what we are going to get, okay? So, but remember, we say that as your gradient, remember now let's get back to the previous concept. We are saying that as you keep moving, as you keep on adjusting your X, the X is going, this small change in X tending towards the zero, your, your point P is going to tend towards what? point Q, okay? So therefore, we are going to say that as we tend to, as remember that this X here, as it tends towards the what? As this small change tends towards this zero here. As it tends towards the zero, then you will see that your Q is also tending towards the what? Towards the P. So that's where we come up with this uh, concept here. This is where we come up with this. I think we've we've seen it. We've seen this one here. Now we are saying for smaller values of x. Okay. Uh, okay. So we are saying for smaller values of x. Okay. For smaller values of small change in x, as we say, this one tending towards zero. Point Q will approach point what? Point P. Here, as you keep working, point this point here, this point Q will be tending towards what? Towards point 
p that's what we are saying so because of the smaller changes of of x so in so doing we are saying that the gradient of the code pq will become closer to the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point what at point p okay so in the limiting case we say smaller change in x tends towards to zero so in the gradient of the curve at point p will be the limit as x small change in x tends towards zero into small change in that and at the end of it all we shall have this as our this will be now our final this will be our final thing or rather our final equation when you're working with it the, the the from first principles okay so we say the final thing when you're working with we shall say the limit as small change in x tends towards zero, which we saw in our previous working, okay? Into, we have f into x plus small change in x minus f of x out of small change in what? Small change in x. So this will be the formula that we shall be using when you're working from first principles, okay? When you're working from first principles, if you have to calculate your, if you calculate your gradient of a point or the gradient of, of a curve from first principles, we shall use this as the formula. Okay, we shall use this as our formula. If you have to calculate the gradient of a point from first principles, we use this one here where we say limit as small change in x tends towards zero, x plus small change minus f of x over this. But remember, this is y, this, will, this is almost like y, but we've done the substitution. Okay, this is our small change in y, and also this is our small change in x. Um, maybe by example, maybe by example, if we do have, uh, this is our final equation that we are going to use, okay? And that's where we now say, but remember I told you, it's the same as saying dy dx, or there is also function prime x. This is, you are talking about the same thing. And also the change in y, change in x, or you're talking about the gradient. We also, we are all talking about the, the same thing, but this is what the formula that we are going to keep on using maybe by example uh, we are saying using differentiation from first principles show that the gradient of the curve y equals x squared is that huh? if you have that this is the final thing that we are looking at now if we are saying we are using first principles first principles is the issue so from first principles we are saying we are finding the gradient of the curve y equals to x squared. And we know we would have said sure that it is equal to what? To, to x, okay? But we know that the gradient is limit as small change of x tends towards zero into f of x plus small change, uh, small change in x minus f of x out of small change in what? small change in x this is the formula that we have so what are we supposed to do we need to first get this one here this is where remember this is where the challenge comes in uh, members have issues with the yes emerald your hand is up and what if i equated like for example here we have y is equals to x squared if i yeah. equated that a small change in in y is the same as a small change in x is it correct small change in y Yes, it's the same as the small change of x. Yes. Uh -huh. So for and this case, do... mm -hmm. for this case, we'll have y plus dy is equals to x plus dx squared in a bracket. Y plus change in y. Yes, is equals uh -huh. to x plus change in x, but you put in a bracket squared. 
Aha. Yes, I was wondering if, if that's also correct. I think we are still coming to the same thing. Because at the end of it all, you're going to substitute your x here, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, this is this is true. But still you are going to come, I think, to the same. I think you're solving this one here, this part here. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, you're just solving this part here. This part is fine for this one here. This is fine. But this is a small change in y being equal to this, which is this. is It is the same thing, I think. We're talking about the same thing. Which okay, is fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, we do the substitution. I, I was saying that the issue that we do have at hand is this upper one for the y. I want us to carefully learn how to do the, that substitution. So for f into x plus small change in x minus f of x, this is the same as, uh -huh. this will be the same as, who can do for us the substitution here? I want someone to do for us the substitution here. Now, uh, someone to do for us a substitution here for X. I, I want to see if people have all. Someone to do for us a substitution here. If you have your Y as X squared and we are substituting into this. Mm -hmm. Any hand? I want you to substitute y equals x squared into this. Yes. Yes, Joshua. Yes, if I'm to try. Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can first think that we have to first expand to say Yes, I want you to just do substitution. I want to bring this x squared into this, uh huh? <laughs> right, really? <laughs> You're lost. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um. Yes, Emma. Emma. Well, so let me also, so if try. I'm also to try, we'll have uh -huh. x plus the x squared. X plus plus the x. Yes, squared, squared eh? in bracket, yes. Uh -huh. Minus x squared. Minus x squared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Members, I, I want us to look at this with the close skin eyes, eh? that we are doing a substitution here. F of x, x, our x here is this x squared, okay? So you put it here. The smaller change remains. So meaning, we are still maintaining our small. What, what do we do the substitution? We only do substitutions for X, okay? Just do the substitution for X, okay? That's what you need to do. So when you bring your X here, this is what you'll be getting. Uh, so from here, who can now solve for us from here, from this point up to the end? Uh, Melissa has a question, Melissa? Teacher, you said we only substitute x squared in x, but how comes also the small change becomes squared? Uh -huh. Now, the smaller change, why is the smaller change coming in? Because we are being told plus the smaller change, okay? We are adding a smaller change. Let me look at, look at our thing. Look at our equation here. Uh, look at our graph. Maybe let me take you to our graph here. Uh, is it this? There's a graph we had. Uh -huh. Do you see this? This is y, okay? Let's assume this is your x squared. Okay, assuming this is your x squared, this one here. So when you move the other side, it is the same x squared now. You are adding something onto it, okay? You are adding something onto that x squared. That's why the x squared is coming into our, that's where the small change is coming from. You are adding something onto it, okay? When you have the x here and you add something, we, this one, does, it doesn't rule out that the x has gone. No, we've added something onto it. And that's the whole reason as to why we are saying, that's why we are having this one here, that x, 
this whole squared here becomes what? The small change. I, I hope we get here. We are going to do more substitutions and then you will get to know the, how it whole, the whole thing flows. So at the end of it all, when you simplify this, we shall get, uh, this is the same as a X plus small change in X. I hope we know this, huh? small change in X minus X squared. Eh? Okay, so when you open up these brackets, you have uh, x squared plus 2x, small change in x. Please, you can prove out this. Huh? Uh, let me use this. Uh, let me maintain the x. Huh? Maintain my x. Plus the small change in x, then plus small change in x squared minus eh, x squared. Okay, we are just simplifying this bracket here. I know where this is where the challenge comes in doing this substitution. As long as you can give the substitution, trust me, the rest is fine. So when you simplify this, you see that this x squared goes with this other x squared. Okay, x minus x. So we shall remain with the two x small change in x. Two x small change in x plus smaller change in x squared okay this is what you have now you move back to your original no it's okay we can you can use difference of squares it is fine um, yeah, i'm trying to help people who, who, who just make sure to show you by the at our level i'm just supposed to write the final answer but uh, because we may not be at different levels. That's why I try to, I'm trying to go through step by step. But if you, I know someone has already got the final answer here. Okay. So now this will be now your function of X. Okay. This is what you have got. But remember our, 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 remember our equation is limit as small change in X tends towards zero. Okay. Into F of X, is now this one here. So you do the substitution. Eh? We are doing the substitution. So where there is this, we put this. So we shall have two X change of X plus change of what? X squared out of the smaller change in what? The smaller change in X. Okay, this is what we have. Now, remember this one is tending towards zero. Okay, but we need to first put this in in other form, uh, and I think when you do when you go to addition rule, eh, uh, this is the same as two x change in x out of change in x plus change in x squared out of change in x. Hey, now this is additional rule. We've separated this. Eh? We've separated this. When you separate this, this is what you get. Okay, when you separate your equation here, when you separate these two, when you add these two, you're going to come up with the same thing here. So here we cross out, this one goes with this other one. This one was, this one also will remain with the change in X alone. Okay, so we shall come to limit, we end up with limit a small change of X tends towards zero. Uh, this will be two X plus, small change in x this is what we have okay remember our our issue is proving yeah? we are proving so finally remember our x our small change in x is tending towards zero okay the small change in x is tending towards zero so this is it this is going to be equated to zero and when you equate this one to zero your final result will be two x you remain with the two x because the change in x is tending towards what? Towards the zero. So this will be now your final result. So at the end of it all, you know that, that a dy dx will be equal to 2x. From first principles, remember, there's no shortcut. Whenever you see a question from first principles, this is what you're going to do. And I'm sure you're going to come across so many questions telling you, Evaluate from first principles. Evaluate from first principles. OK? 
Okay. I know our issue is substitution, but we need to uh, get used to that. Okay. Okay. Our time is first spent. I think uh, we've gone uh, beyond the time that we're supposed to have. Unless there's a question, let me have a question or two uh, before I before we close. Any question or so? Yes, Joshua. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, when we are calculating previously the other, the gradient of a uh, of, uh, curve mm -hmm. to, to, to make it a half and we develop a code. So mm -hmm. after calculating for the gradient of that code, mm -hmm. is the gradient going to be the real gradient of the curve or it will be the, for the code only? Uh, that would be for the code, that section. So if they ask me for the gradient the code. and I get the one for the first code and for the second code and I add them together, we might have got the, no, the gradient of the outcome. No, no. Now, this is how it is. Eh? Why yeah. were we using that was to find out a formula, to generate a formula which we shall use. For you, when you're told to get the gradient of the curve, of that given curve, yeah? Yes. If you're to get the gradient of that given curve, you will use the formula to X. And then you come up with the what? With the gradient. Like, Knowing that your X is going to keep on changing, okay? It will keep changing, but it will turn, it will, because it is a curve, remember it is big, it is quite large. So meaning, Whenever, depending on the value of x. So you give us the point which x, the point of x is this, x is this, x. The other, you do the substitution, give us the gradient. But when we are using, when we are onto the code, what were you trying to generate? We we're trying to show that when you keep on, when you keep on changing the value of x and you bring it towards the, you bring it it's towards zero. zero, it will turn to the real gradient that you want. Okay. okay, no matter the values of x, what the values of x, it will tend at least to a certain value. And that one is, right. is helping us to generate from first principles. And when we know that from the other side, now from first principles, it will be easier for us to know that whatever we see a change in x, this one, every change in x tends towards what? What's zero? So we, whatever yes. we remain with will be our, our result. Okay, teacher. Okay, thank you. Um, hey, 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 hey. Someone wants to exercise already. Any other question? Uh, any other question? Any other question? I uh, want to. Any other question? All right. Uh, yes, Ray. Ray, Ray, Ray is here. Teacher, how, how do I join the Google Classroom? DJ in the Google Classroom. Okay. Um, there is a, a link that I'm going to share with you. Okay. Maybe what you do, I'm going to share here my number whereby you inbox me and then I send you the I send you the link. Eh? I'll send you the link to I'll send you the link to the Google Classroom directly because I think I don't have it quickly here. You can share with me and then I give you the link to the Google Classroom. Okay. I think that's it. That's it. Now I'm going to give you, I have I have just one one bit of exercise that I'll give you to just evaluate from first principles. Eh? Just evaluate from first principles. I'm going to avail to you these notes in the Google Classroom where you'll be able to go through them as well. Uh you're going to work out for me this. Okay. This, huh? So this is what we have. Just a clue, dear members, just a simple clue. This is what you need to know. That when you have this X, what is going, what you're going to put here? If you're to put, if you're getting Y plus the small change in Y, what do you do to here? So this will be uh here when you're putting for the small change it will be three into the x will be 
this will now be x plus the small change in x squared. Look at this. This is what you, I think I need to give you a clue on this. Eh? For the smaller change, we are now at the top. We are now at the top. Uh huh. Minus nine into we are on a smaller change. X. Uh, this is x plus smaller change in x plus five. Okay. Minus this other one here. Uh, this is minus y. Eh? Minus the whole equation again, 3x minus 9x plus 5. So you see that you have two things here. This is what you're going to solve. For the one for, for, for small, remember we are going dx, dy dx is it? A smaller change in y, which is y plus smaller change in y minus y over the smaller change in x. Okay? So, what is more important for you is this upper one here, for you to evaluate. So evaluate this one here separately. I've tried to give you a clue, okay? So once you do this, once you evaluate this, you put it out of the smaller change in X and you'll be good to go, okay? I, I think this is, I've made it simpler now. Eh? Those of you who have issues with substitution, those with issues with substitution, that's how you're going to do, carry on the substitution. Uh, yes, Joshua. Yeah, that that uh, that uh, why you have subtracted. Is it that you have taken this y that is just up before the equal signs and subtracted it? Yes, 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 yes. This remember you are saying this y is equal to this one here. This value of x. Yes. Yes, that's why we substituted this. Okay. Yes, uh, I think we got that. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let me wish you, it's been a long lesson, but I want to wish you well. I'm going to post this immediately and you can try to work out these two things and then I will check through. Okay, let me wish you a good week and uh, have a nice day.